uh, stab in the back. The best way to stay competitive is to move production to Monterey, Mexico. What am I going to do? They've gotten a raw deal. Very disrespectful, and I felt like they left us behind. Life is going to change. We have heard your anger and your disappointment over Carrier's decision to move jobs here. And we're not going away quietly. Mexico's a disaster. Would you work for $3 an hour? Something's got to change in this country. Workers take a stand outside the carrier plant. We've got to keep these jobs here. Call 6 Investigates. Moving to Mexico from RTV6. Save the jobs. That's the call from carrier workers as their company prepares to move to Mexico. And people are counting on the state's outlook that 100,000 jobs are available in Indiana. 100,000 jobs for 100,000 people. That's enough to fill Victory Field more than five times. Call 6 Investigates asked the Indiana Department of Workforce Development to give us a snapshot of the jobs in question. Working for you, our digital team dug into the data to crunch the numbers. Most of the available jobs were in healthcare, retail, transportation, and warehousing. 44,000 would pay less than 45,000 a year. More than 23,000 jobs pay less than 30,000. Manufacturing jobs rank sixth with about 4,000 positions available, earning an average $63,000. Sadness and fear. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Fear of what's gonna come. You know, it, you don't know. There's, there's no way of knowing what's gonna happen and you know that your life's going to change tremendously. I mean, it just is. Many workers that I talk with are nervous about what's next. One veteran who fought in the first Iraq war hopes the changing economy isn't his enemy. I'm an outdoorsman anyway from being in the military. Take my mind away from the job, ease my mind. The path is unclear for Richard Burns. 52 years old now, what do I do now? I got to fight for my life, fight for another job. The last time Richard was in a fight, he was in a tank. In 1991, he served in the Army during the first Iraq War. In March 1994, he left the military. By July, he was hired at Carrier. I bring loyalty, you know. Like in the military, we had that American soldier's creed, you know. Look out for our commanders. Look out for commanders, and our commanders will look out for us. You know, and, and we never leave anybody behind. And I felt like they left us behind. They left a lot of Americans behind. Tom Fugate is changing course on his plans. I have came to the realization that it's a given thing that they are moving. He talked about retiring in about five years. I've been there since I was 18 years old. <laughs> Here I am, 61. I mean, that's my lifetime right there. So I just need to kind of every so often just get away from things. Tom thinks he can survive on a part-time job when the time comes. But Richard, he says he needs a full-time position. People are prone to hire somebody at 22, then 52, then somebody can give them 30 or 40 years and instead of somebody that will only give them 10 years. Because it'll be time for me to retire in about 10 more years. With his last child heading to college in the fall, he says he'll need to earn at least $15 an hour and is open to a new career. I doubt I look for a manufacturing job. I don't want another door to close on me like this. A city-led task force and state officials are working behind the scenes on the programs that they will provide when United Technologies Carrier begins cutting jobs. The carrier production jobs in Mexico will pay $3 an hour. That's the average hourly wage for manufacturing workers in Mexico since December 2015. For the past five years, it was $2.55 an hour, the lowest level, $2, back in 2009. They see one company can go over, over to Mexico and make the profits that they're going to make. Other companies will soon join. If they can manufacture something that is so important in our everyday lives and I can produce it for less and then I can in turn sell it for something so much more and make billions of dollars off of it, why can't we do it? 
Why do we have to use American workers? Indiana leads the nation in manufacturing jobs, and Governor Mike Pence says he's not concerned that other companies will follow Carrier or those low wages. The workers in Indiana, I think, are the best in the country and the best in the world. Our productivity is second to none. The cost of skilled labor in this country versus competitor countries around the world has been leveling off in recent years. That's why you see a lot of reshoring of manufacturing jobs that have been coming back to the United States. I'm very confident we have been able to succeed in the global marketplace. We're going to continue to be able to succeed, but we have got to get some relief from the avalanche of taxes and regulations coming out of Washington, D.C. The people are boiling mad over free trade agreements like NAFTA. Who are we? What do we want? Justice! Stand up! Fight back! Stand up! Fight back! Critics of NAFTA have made their voices known on the streets of Indianapolis. NAFTA was signed in December 1993 between the United States, Mexico, and Canada. It's a pact that's created and taken jobs. I hope somebody can step up and, and stick to a promise of, of helping people like myself and the people I work with from stopping these companies from doing this. I believe they are gone. They, they are going to make too much money by moving. And, you know, Corporate greed, you can't, you can't mess with that. I mean, up here, we can't work for what they can work for down there. We have seen both sides of the foreign trade coin. On one side, since 2011, the Federal Trade Adjustment Act has helped more than 13,000 Hoosiers and more than 100 businesses. It's cost nearly $33 million to retrain and help those workers. On the other side, Indiana has benefited from trade. Plus, major foreign businesses employ thousands of Hoosiers at Rolls-Royce, Toyota, Subaru, NSK, Honda, and Roche. The 2016 presidential race put Carrier in the national spotlight. Both parties promised to bring back manufacturing jobs to the country, and candidates mentioned Carrier in their stump speeches. Carrier. We got this Carrier Corporation. Carrier. Carrier. We have seen the shutdown of tens of thousands of factories. We've seen a race to the bottom. We need a new trade set of trade policies which work for workers, not just the CEOs of large corporations. Free trade, great, but it's not working for us. It's not working for us. Uh, Katie, some say that Carrier is becoming a poster child against the pending Trans-Pacific Partnership. Raphael, some are calling that trade pact NAFTA on steroids. Congressman Andre Carson believes TPP would be good for Indiana's farmers, but not for manufacturers. We're talking about more than 523,000 people earning on average $1,100 a week. Carson is saying no TPP and says he would support revisiting and reworking NAFTA. No piece of legislation or any proposal is, is perfect. Uh, the hope is that we have time to go back throughout the years and make necessary corrections or even adjustments. But I think NAFTA uh, history uh, is a great reference point, especially when it comes to trade deals like NAFTA. It was, it, it was destructive, and in terms of what it did for our economic base in the state of Indiana, I think it's going to be several more decades until we can fully recover. So how big is TPP? Well, TPP would expand trade to 11 countries, those countries including Vietnam, New Zealand, and Australia. A lot has been said that uh, federal regulations are also costing U.S. jobs. There is support on both sides of the aisle to close loopholes that some believe are encouraging companies to ship jobs overseas. Uh, Katie, thank you so much. It's a disappearing act that no city or town wants to see. So who is key to turning the tide? You definitely take advantage of any education that's available um, so that when things like this come along, it gives you some type of hope that you will be able to find a job.